Hi, I'm at the Fenton Curling Rink here, just outside Royal Tunbridge Wells. Very unusual place, you might think, for an international sporting arena just as this. In fact, it's the only one in England today. The sport is mainly known in Scotland, where it is recorded back to the 1500s in Scottish literature. A number of other international countries have taken it on board, mainly Canada. But in England today, most people only got to know about the sport from the 2002 Winter Olympics. When the British ladies team won gold, it was actually our only gold for the whole tournament. Today we're here for a second anniversary tournament involving three international countries, including the UK, Spain and Iceland. And I'm here with Ernest Fenton, the owner of the curling rink just outside rural Tunbridge Wells just to find out what the inspiration was to open here in Kent, when there wasn't one in England. Ernest, first of all, how long have you been in curling? Well, a long, long time. I started, I think, when I was 17 or 18, and uh, obviously that was in Scotland, uh, where I was brought up. And I curled regularly until I came down to uh, England in 1968. And I obviously looked for a curling rink. And was there one? Uh, no. And how did you manage that? You must have still kept the sport up, even though there wasn't one, or was it only when you went back to Scotland to say, see family? Yes, I mean, partly that, and um, there have been attempts at having curling on uh, skating rinks. Yeah. Um, but the problem is that uh, skating obviously churns the surface up, so you've got to prepare it, and you never get enough time to do it properly. And so the curling that was attempted on uh, skating rinks was pretty bad. And I thought to myself, well... Curling is never going to get going properly until we have a decent uh, surface to play on. Why do you think the sport didn't take off in England at all? It was, I mean, after all, we're very close to Scotland, mm. closest country, but it's taken off in other countries around the world. But the closest country to you, it wasn't. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good point. I'm, I'm not quite sure why it never did uh, catch on in uh, England. I think it's partly just the cost of uh, running an ice rink. I mean, it's jolly expensive, as you can imagine. Mm. And if you want to um, get your money back, then it's much better to have a whole load of people skating around it rather than the few that you can get on at any one time with curling. So it's, uh, it meets an economic thing, really. And this is actually on your farm? That's right. Yeah, this, uh, the building we're in right now is uh, the old uh, cow shed. I used to have a dairy herd, and uh, this building was full of cows, and uh, we gave up um, dairy farming in the 80s, and we've done various things with the building. But uh, I suppose you could call this... A, a rather unusual diversification for a farmer. But today were actual international group, uh, groups from Iceland and Spain, so they obviously have come over here. Um, on that side, is it a self-funded sport? I mean, anyone that is playing it to a point of serious and professional, they oh, get paid yes. for Yes, I think um, uh, that's true right up until you get to the Olympic team itself. Um, and the, 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 the Scottish side are the world champions at the moment, the men's side, and they do get uh, some sponsorship. And the Olympic um, Association, the British Olympic Association, are putting money into, into curling. Over a million pounds is going in to help uh, get that top um, tier of curling as, um, as competitive as possible. But for the rest of the sport, it's uh, really self-funded. How do you see the future and what would you like to see happen? Um, what I'd like to see is the development of uh, the start with schools, and we've got a number of schools playing here. Uh, from there they go to the juniors, we need to give them proper coaching and then try to get competitive teams at the junior level, under 21s, and then they move forward to the senior teams. And that's, that's the intention, to try to build that up and get as many youngsters along here as possible uh, to take up the sport. And, we, and we're, we, we're um, getting a little bit of help from Thomas Wells Borough Council for uh, uh, the school programme. So, you know, it's, um, it's, it's made a good start. And is there a possible, with the 2012 Olympics coming along, and I believe the government have opened up a pot of money for, for different sports to able children to come along, is there any way that you could approach curling to them to see if you can get some funding to actually encourage more children, not just for school activities, but to be a future British team? Well, I hope so, yes. Uh, it's quite difficult to get, to, for a minority sport, to get money. I mean, they've got so many calls on their, their, their resources, but I hope that we can get some money uh, into the sport down here and, um, and encourage the kids to come along and, and take it up seriously.